Dennis Foster, I was uh, born and raised, grew up in the Millette area, which is just south of Aberdeen, Aberdeen being our major retail center. Uh, basically, the reason I got into this is I hunt myself all fall anyway. I have other uh, business concerns, but I take the falls off. And probably the biggest reason is to watch the dogs work. And quite frankly, if I can bring people out here and show them our lifestyle, hunting the way we grew up, and I get to watch my dogs and make a living in the process of doing so, it's a win-win situation. And also on a personal note, there's a lot of quote-unquote game farm type operations where I don't think they portray our heritage quite as well. So literally we hunt out of old Suburbans, we hunt the way I grew up, and I want to relay that flavor to folks. You know, the true South Dakota lifestyle, and, and I think we succeeded in that. You know, the guys are walking away happy. Uh, personally, I prefer the late season hunts. There's several reasons for that. One, it's a more relaxed uh, atmosphere. Not near as many guys are out here. And quite frankly, the hunting is much better. There's a common misconception. The guys think, oh my God, you know, we're three, four weeks into season and a bunch of birds have been shot off or opportunities are less. It's actually quite the opposite. The opportunities are much higher. There's several reasons for that. Typically, our row crops are harvested which condenses the birds into smaller areas. Two, our temperatures are cooling, which is also condensing the birds, slowly getting into heavier cover. And with that, we don't have to take these big, expansive walks. We can pick and choose areas of smaller cover. With that, we're more efficient. If we do have cold weather, we're not in the weather near as much. It's more of a run and gun scenario. And me, personally, is when we get the big, explosive flushes and literally, it's like being at a concert. You can feel the wing beats as they come up. And, and to watch somebody's expression when they see that, and, and me too, it catches me. A lot of times my guys will stand there with a the gun and they don't even shoot because they're busy just taking it all in. And to me, that's, that's the biggest rush of it. One of the, the major reasons you're gonna wanna have dogs, and not just dogs, hopefully good dogs, is these birds are wild and they're wily and they have adapted quite literally in my lifetime and become even a little bit tougher to hunt. The big thing is they don't want to fly. Flying is their last option and they want to run. So you need dogs that can track them through the field until we can finally pin them up against different kinds of cover or run them out of cover to pop them up. And then not only that, once we have the bird in the air, once we get it down, we've got to find it and these birds will tuck under the tiniest little bit of cover. And as a human, we could walk around all day and not have any chance of finding them, where the dogs will pick them up. It makes it a more ethical hunt. It makes it more enjoyable. And the fact that we are getting the birds for our effort. You know, and then just the pure fact of watching a good dog work. Wouldn't believe the amount of hunters I have come up and say, we really don't care if we shoot any birds. If we do, it's great. We just want to watch your dogs work these birds. We're going to head out on a late season pheasant hunt, getting down towards the end of the year, which frankly is my favorite time of the year. Believe this or not, we've been praying for some cold and some snow. The crops are in. We've got about a foot of snow on the level. Drifted deeper in places, obviously, about 15 degrees below zero. So with that, equipment becomes very key to success. These birds are jumpy. We have no room for air. A lot of that is what we personally wear to stay comfortable so we can actually be out there and perform ourselves all day. A couple of simple tips that people overlook, quite frankly, is footwear. Uh, before season started, the folks at Red Wing got a hold of me asked me what I'd like to have for some uh, boots, and I told them I need something for early season, I need something for late season, but something light. They'd sent me some vapor treks, which I wore all through early season, lightly insulated, very light, comfortable, putting on a lot of miles chasing these scattered birds. Now the birds are grouped up tightly due to the cold and snow and the fact that our corn crop is, for the most part, harvested. Now we're quite cold and we're going through a lot of snow. And with that, typically heavy boots are quite frankly heavy. They're cumbersome, they're clumsy, and they tend to wear you out 
it's hard to get your footing, brace yourself for, for proper shot, stance, so forth. But I tell you, these Ice Trek boots, I am just tickled pink with them. Been wearing them the last several days. And they're a synthetic boot, and they're quite light, but they also maintain their waterproof nature. And one thing that I really like, and I'm not even sure what this gizmo is called, is they're easy to put on, because typically heavy boots, you're lacing and you're doing this, and as we get older, quite frankly, we get a little paunch, and we're you know, about half have our tongues hanging out, trying to get laced up or unlaced at the end of the day. You simply just slip your foot in the things. They go in that simple. And, and take this device and just twist her. And get it to whatever comfort level you like. And quite frankly, it is that simple. Another thing that I found, I've been wearing these Columbia pants for a little more warmth and also protection in this snow as we get to pounding around through it so it isn't sticking to us and we get in the vehicles and it's melting on us and we end up wet. These are waterproof, but another thing I like is they've got this inner lining that's got elastic, because quite often you'll step through deep snow and you'll go over your boots, it'll set on your pants, and it'll end up finding its way in there and melting, and you'll have wet feet at the end of the day, even though you do have waterproof boots. You simply pull this elastic lining over the top of them. I mean, that is tight, nothing's getting in there. Pull your pants down and you're good to go. On the flip side, at the end of the day, one of the nicest things is, is getting out of your heavy clothes and your boots. So you simply pull this stuff up and you snap that thing off, pull like that, and you're out of them. It's just that simple. Little things like that go a long way for not only comfort, but your pure enjoyment in the day. And you're going to find if you're going out there with a better attitude, you're going to shoot better, you're going to end up being more successful. So, something to consider and definitely something you're going to want to do. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we have customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds. Make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Make your next day on the water even better with Airwave Pedestal, the only air suspension system that can be custom adjusted to the weight of the rider. No unreliable springs, no oil-filled shocks to leak. Our patented design utilizes a two-stage suspension system to smooth out the roughest ride, a limiting travel to an industry-leading two inches. This boating season, enjoy your time on the water to the fullest. Find out how at airwavepedestal.com. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime.
Well, we've just about got everything ready to run outside, throw on some heavy coats, go out in the cold weather, load the dogs up, and actually start hunting. Uh, we just talked about what we're putting on our feet. Now, more importantly, we need to talk about what we're putting in our hands, namely our guns, to knock down these late season birds. And there are a couple key things that you're gonna to wanna to be aware of. First thing is chokes. I run a modified in most cases, perhaps improved modified. We're gonna want tighter patterns because we need to reach out and touch these birds and touch them very firmly at that. These birds are tough, they're wild, they do not like to die. You need to bring them down so they can be picked up quickly uh, by the dog so they're not running off on you, spooking more birds because these birds are flighty this time of year. They're gonna be longer shots. Another thing I should allude to is shoot quickly. Do not dally around. Now with that, I shoot a modified where a lot of guys shoot an improved modified and quite frankly, I think I can get by with a little more open choke because of the shells that I shoot, namely the Fiocchi brand of shells and the nickel plated shot, I feel stays in the column better so it stays tighter down range because it isn't deforming like just pure lead does as it's hitting each other and uh, becoming slightly deformed and it's starting to fly off and scatter around a bit. To start the season, we were shooting two and three quarter inch shells, very hot shells. Start with number fives, quickly graduate to fours, obviously the nickel plated stuff, fast shells. Now we're moving into the three inch stuff and it's imperative that you do have quality shells. We're gonna shoot the three inch uh, golden pheasant variety and actually shooting an ounce and three quarters, which is a big payload and we're tossing that down range at them at 1,200 feet per second, which is gonna hit these birds hard. That being said, these birds can get very rangy. If we need to, we'll actually step up to a turkey load. The golden turkey loads, basically the same shell. We're shooting an ounce and three quarter, nickel plated fours, but these are spitting them out at 13 and 25 feet per second. A bit quicker, it's gonna to get to them quicker before they do get out of range, and then also before your shot is off where you were actually pulling the trigger, wanting the shot to go. Another thing I should allude to too, is if you are a quick shooter, we don't need big leads on these birds with fast shells. Basically put it on their nose, keep swinging, shoot instinctively, you'll do your best. I find the guys ask me, how much do you lead? I don't know. I shoot instinctively, the birds come down. The more you think, the more you're gonna goof up. But the key to the whole story here is shoot quality ammunition, tighten your chokes up, shoot quickly. You're gonna put more birds down. You're gonna have a more enjoyable experience. You're gonna get out of the cold quicker with a full bag.
Hey folks, we're just taking a little break from the action here. Wanted to share a few things about this late season hunting that we're doing. Quite frankly, far too many people avoid it. They feel it's too cold. They feel the birds are terribly spooky, which they can be at times. But quite frankly, today what we're finding in this bird particular held super tight in the cattails. We actually had three dogs pointing it, had a heck of a time even getting it up. And the thing that I like most is what you can expect is these big puffy feathered birds. You can see here, you know, look at the tail on that guy. And the spurs is one thing I always look at to tell if it's a mature bird. And this has actually got ivory tips on it. That's sharper than heck. So this is a minimum two, probably a three year old bird. You know, and this is what you're gonna get if you come out here. It's a little bit of work walking, but just uh, go at a steady pace and you can get her done. High Point Pet Foods presents Country Creations Dog Foods, offering quality nutrition for the life of your canine companion. To fuel the fire of puppyhood into keeping the energy level high of an active young dog, optimizing the performance of the hard charging adult, or having a quality diet for your senior canine companion. Country Creations has you covered with their quality formulas. Get in touch with High Point Pet Foods today. Midwest Gundog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we have customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds. Make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Well, as you might be able to tell, I spend a lot of time behind a shotgun. Whether it's at the clay target fields, sporting clays, doing exhibitions, or bird hunting, I always trust my shooting skills to the real elite. Not only for the lighter recoil, but as you can tell, the harder hitting, consistent patterns. These clay targets don't stand a chance when you shoot real elite. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Dennis Foster here. We're wrapping up another successful season at Dakota Pheasant Guide. Uh, I've got our last bird of the day here. Belle is still pretty excited, which I am as well. I got to tell you folks, a lot of people aren't taking advantage of these late season hunts. They feel it's too cold so forth. With the warm weather clothing that we have nowadays, it's really not too bad. Dress properly, 
Uh, get out there, you're moving around quite a bit. You're not gonna be that terribly cold. The biggest benefit is these birds are bunched up tightly. You're gonna get these big, beautiful, fully feathered, colored out birds, mature birds. And quite frankly, we have not seen another hunter in the last three days. And you're gonna find that. Uh, it's another great opportunity for those of you who wanna hunt uh, public ground because it's also largely untouched. I guarantee you I could drive around Spink County all afternoon, maybe see one group of hunters on any public land. So get yourself out here, take part in what uh, we're so proud of. got done shooting a few birds getting them cleaned up and I pulled a couple gizzards and I get a common question why do these birds come up to the road in the evening and quite frankly what they're doing is they're coming up to get little bits of gravel and what that does they get it in their gizzards and it helps them grind that food down to a finer format before it goes in their digestive tract down to their stomach making it much more digestible in particular corn that's not the most digestible thing in the world so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open one of these up and show you exactly how it works. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a knife and slice this open and show you the function of it. So I've got it partly open here. As I open it up, this is interesting too. One of these birds, when we cleaned it, I had looked at his crop. I'm trying not to spill all this so you can see it. This particular bird, he had a lot of very small weed seeds in him which are the stuff that's already ground up. And then he also had a bit of corn, if you can see that. And it's already started grinding down that corn. As we move farther through the gizzard down the digestive tract, it's down to just a fine meal type of stuff here. And then that's gonna make it much more digestible. Then they'll pass that right onto their digestive tract. And I'll kind of shake some of this out. And I'm even gonna rinse this a bit and show you how it does, does work. So this is the chamber of the gizzard. On the outside, that is just pure muscle. And what that'll do is it'll just sit there basically like a fist, and it'll sit there and it'll grind all that stuff up. So that's how it works in these birds. Another thing too, is if you like, and if I had fingernails, I can show you. You can take and <clears throat> pull this inner lining, just like I did there. Pull that apart, and you've got gizzards to eat, just like a chicken gizzard, no different. Prepare them the same, and that's something you could stretch your birds out a little bit further, and it's it's a nice little appetizer when a guy's sitting around having a few cocktails uh, after the hunt. You can fry some up, so it's just something to consider when you're cleaning these birds. As fun as it is chasing these birds around, it's equally as enjoyable eating them and we've got kind of a way that we like to do it here and what we'll do is we'll take the breasts we'll hammer them out slightly with a meat hammer soak them in buttermilk overnight and there's kind of a two-part process to that one the hammering breaks up the fibers slightly and also that buttermilk breaks them up and as you can see these were small pieces of brass and they just end up puffing up when they hit that oil and further breaks those fibers apart and uh, what we're doing for breading is we're taking them directly out of the buttermilk, dredging them back and forth in the flour, hitting them in buttermilk again, similar to an egg wash, and then put it in your favorite batter. And they're breading. And there's a lot of different things you can do. You can make your own if, if you're good at that, have any uh, preferences for it. But something very simple, what I'll do is just simply use shore lunch for fish breading. And, uh, if you like it a little more on the spicier side, you can do say half Cajun, half uh, original. Uh, we're using fried chicken, which I just got onto here this week, and that's quite good. Another thing I should allude to too is I put uh, some Tony seasoning, which is a Cajun seasoning, a lot of cayenne based kind of hot stuff, sprinkled that around in the buttermilk uh, when we soaked it. So it's got kind of a bite, but not real hot, just enough to give it a, a good hearty flavor. So it's something to consider when you want to cook up your birds.
diesel train rolls down the line As I'm headed for the land of corn and rye There is a place I'm always satisfied Full of remedies to ease my worried mind Like pulling catfish on the banks of Cherry Cove Watching wood ducks glide like